Back with a new study that has some scientists raising concerns about our environmental health and its impacts on the human body. Over the years, microplastics, a word you probably started to hear more, they've been found in almost every organ in the body, as well as in the bloodstream. But now, for what seems to be the first time, these microscopic pollutants have been found in tissue in the human brain. NBC News medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar is here to explain what this new research means. Ay, yeah, ay, ay. This is yeah. one of those ones where you're like, I'm worried about it, don't think I can do anything about it, but you're going to tell me if I can. So let's yeah. Let's first start with the information. It's a new study. It found microplastics in the olfactory bulb of multiple people, I yes. understand, during autopsies. Yes. This is responsible. You, you kind of might remember this from bio or whatever, wherever you learn this. Yes. It processes information, smell, things like that. Yeah. According to the study, uh, does that mean we're, we're breathing in these micro? What, what, what could this mean? Well, so experts are saying that this is a very reasonable concept that the news would be a portal of entry to the brain. As you pointed out in the intro, there has been a of reports now that microplastics have found in kidney tissue, liver tissue, placental tissue. There was an article in the spring that showed that people who had microplastics in the carotid artery that, you know, oh, that that could increase the risk of heart attack and stroke. So what they are surmising here is that if you have of inflammation in nasal passages, the microplastics, it's, it's easier for them to get in. The olfactory bulb, if you Google it, it sits right here at the top of the uh -huh. nose, and it's a, basically a conduit to the brain. But now that kind of, that we're taking it one step right. beyond what, what the information showed. It showed that it was in the olfactory bulb. I think the next step would have been to do autopsy on the brain tissue itself to see if there are microplastics there. And then the next leap, Savannah, is what does that really mean for human health, right? Yeah, the totally. concern is that it potentially could increase the risk for neurodegenerative disease, but we have zero evidence that that is the case at this time. So let's also define a microplastic. Yes. We've been showing some pictures of, of people with little bits of plastic, mm -hmm. it looks like, on their fingertips. There's some behind you. I, I guess, especially in the context of this one, if we're talking about it like entering through the yes. nose, it's not like we see those just flying through the air. No. So what's going on? In fact, they're really, really small to see. Right. This, I, don't, the, I feel like the, these the pictures might be a little bigger than they than actually they are. Actually are. Yeah. The largest microplastic is about five millimeters, and then okay. it goes down to one a fifth of a meter. And then a nanometer measure in the billionths is even really, really difficult to say. Mm -hmm. And we're showing, look at our viewers, uh, yeah. we, our viewers can see they are ubiquitous. They are everywhere. They're in hands. They're in beer, synthetic garments. So they're, they're in the in things something. we are they consuming. Are, it's they're not just in, like you can of them. Exactly. But but you can, right? Because okay. then, then the next step is, I mean, yes, of course, like everything we touch and we do and we ever, like it's in our environment. But if we're talking about the ones that are really concerning, something called phthalates, those are one microplastic sort of degradation of plastics that we think are, could be like um, hormone disrupting. We talk about that a lot for mm. kids who are going through puberty, that it could be impacting them. But can you avoid them? Well, yeah, because anything that has a large plastic that you're using, a plastic bottle. You don't want to put that in the dishwasher. You don't want to put that in the microwave. You want to swap out your plastic bottles and use glass and tin, let's say, containers. So there are little measures that we can make in our daily lives. But like I said before, we even went on air, like unless you want to live on an island somewhere by yourself, you really can't avoid them 100% of the time. Right. That's just not realistic. That's good advice. Too. So in your own home, like if you're like going to use a container to save your leftovers. Yes. Switch to glass, things like that. You can switch to glass and then there's, you know, the on the bottom of those of those plastic containers, they, they have a number mm. um, that like categorizes them um, okay. in terms of plastic. I'm not an expert at this, but the plastic number three is the one that is the most concerning for, okay. for our health, according to experts. Huh. That's the one you might want to especially not put in the dishwasher, not put in the microwave. That I knew about, the microwave, but the dishwasher I'm forgetting and I'm thinking about all our Tupperware I'm going to to go home and check because we do that right i mean out of convenience in our modern day in the way we live again hence this like concept of you can't you can't control for all of it but we can i think we do have some control for some of it i mean and we put you in the position on the show and here at nbc news <laughs> of like tell us a new thing that's going to completely revolutionize our lives yeah and i feel like i'm always on a new kick right like lately i'm like i have to heal my gut i've heard it's the second brain that's, that's <laughs> and there's true so many too. things that you have to do and it's like <laughs> should i take this supplement in the morning should i drink this or that Tell us on this one, is this something we should be factoring into the whole calculus of wellness that we're all dealing with these days, or is there not really much we can do? 
So I, maybe it's somewhere in the middle. Okay. Uh, you know, if that makes sense. I mean, I'm a little bit older than you, so so I've already gotten to the point where I've kind of thrown my hands up and I've said, you know, I mean, what <laughs> am I going to do? Because I'm never going to leave my house again, right? <laughs> because at every turn there lurks another health threat. But I think, like, we with this, we have the information we have. We have found them. There's been one study that's maybe shown an association with actual clinical disease. We will see there will probably be more to come. So so again, the things that are within your control that you can do, why yeah. don't you just start doing them and make it part of your wellness journey or your wellness lifestyle? But I think losing sleep over this, no. Okay. <laughs> There's so much to think about. Dr. Azar, thank you so much. You Great to see you as always. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.